on our perspectives of the interim budget uh, and the way forward uh, from here with a perspective on uh, you know how it uh, uh, can help us in terms of building our uh, equity strategy for this uh, coming year. Uh, our endeavor is that this will be a good interactive session. Uh, you know we really are looking forward to sharing our views uh, and it will also help us as I said identify uh, you know how we should position our portfolios uh, as a result uh, you know of this event. That's just passed. So, uh, you know, before we we start the discussion, uh, and I'll also hand it uh, over to to Vinay, uh, my colleague, to take this forward. But I'd like to set the tone uh, just by asking him initially. You know, I think the view or the impression was that the interim budget uh, looks like it has, uh, you know, it's looking past or beyond the upcoming elections, and it's really set a course uh, for steady fiscal consolidation. Would you agree with that assessment? Uh, thanks a lot, Rakesh. Uh, appreciate everyone joining this call. Uh, I'm just hoping uh, my presentation is visible and it's visible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. perfect. And uh, so so you know just to give you an answer. Hmm. Uh, I think the budget was assuming it's business as usual. Let's be prudent. Let's not be populist and let's do the right thing. And I, I'll, I'll, you know, all these three words which I used, you know, I'm going to kind of showcase to you why we are saying this. Firstly, what does, you know, any person look for, any company look for, any client or any FII look for for investing into a company or into a country? Is how are you stopping your losses? Where are you investing your money? How are you improving the productivity of your money? And I think that's exactly what uh, India Inc. has done. Mm -hmm. At the first end, the fiscal deficit has been showcased as to how it would glide down to a path of 4.6 in the next two years. And post that, obviously, you know, the manage the, com uh, the, the company, the country will come back telling us uh, how they will move to a probable zero situation, wherein, you know, what they get in terms of revenues would be equal to the expenditure for the year. And they've paved the path to that, Rakesh. How okay. do they do that? They've been very impressive on what they've assumed. Uh, in terms of capex uh, as an expenditure, they've not gone overboard. Uh, I personally believe they're going to increase the capex like the last three years of 30 percent. But their point was, you know, we are now increasing 1.5 trillion uh, rupees of capex on a yearly basis, which is 17 percent on last year's numbers, but it is probably two times higher than what it was five years ago. So they're increasing the capex numbers substantially in absolute balance. Uh, that's one. Second, okay. uh, they're assuming the right revenue mix, uh, not going overboard of what they will collect in taxation, not going overboard on what they will give in subsidies. Uh, and net of this impact, what they're saying is that, you know, the year FY24 itself, uh, you know, the year which has just got over, they were at 5.89, uh, they would go at 5.8%. And in the next 12 months, you know, they would have a gliding path which we had earlier assumed of 5.4 down to 5.1 percent. So okay. technically, if I was looking at the debt markets, I would be smiling, saying that, wow, mm. this is a country which is spending in the right part of the assets. Wow, this is a country which is not being populist, not increasing the subsidy. Even if it's spending on rural part, it's spending on where you need affordable housing coming in. It's, a, it's spending on uh, uh, women empowerment, you know, the word Didi Lakpati. Mm. Uh, it's spending on trying to tell NBFCs here where you need to give your money on. Uh, it's spending on digitization. And I think all these pave the path for tomorrow, which will be a very strong future in terms of earnings growth trajectory for the future. So these are the pluses. Uh, and obviously, rural spend, which after two years of or three years of decline, has moved up. But let me take you through these numbers, uh, Rakesh, in a bit just to prove uh, in the comment sure. I'm making. Thank you. So on the nominal bit, you know, they're sticking to the same number they had, let's say, last year, which is 7% or 6.5% plus 4% uh, of inflation. So real growth of 6.5%, 7%, and 3.5%, is inflation. Uh, we should be around, depending on where the rupee dollar parity ends, you know, a $4 trillion GDP country by the end of uh, uh, fiscal 25. Uh, mm. On the revenue growth, Similar assumption as last year, which keeps it buoyant and steady, not fleecing 
taxpayers and trying to ask them to pay a lot more, just increasing the tax bracket of number of people paying more taxes. I think that's the way ahead. Uh, on the expenditure front, interestingly, uh, keeping the absolute int uh, interest expenditure in control, which would lead to interest payment growing lower. Similar story on the subsidy front. If there was an increase on the subsidy front, which happened earlier uh, in the last year, that increase in subsidy front, they would take down to uh, back to the previous year's level and you would start seeing subsidy spend being a lot lesser. Mm. On the CapEx front, as I mentioned, the number already of 17%, but this number of 17% needs to be looked at, uh, you know, on a very serious note saying that, oh, it's a big number. And let me explain to you how. Uh, if I turn back the clock in fiscal 21, uh, incrementally the CapEx spend was about 1.1 trillion. Today, the CapEx spend with the government is suggesting is 1.6 trillion. So incrementally, in a four year period, they're spending CapEx 20 to 25% more than what it was, uh, you know, in fiscal 20. So the number is fantastic. Uh, okay. They've not taken any strong numbers on divestment. And actually, they've reduced the gross borrowing for the year as a whole. So if I sum all this up, Rakesh, you know, frankly, mm. I feel very positive of what the government has done uh, in a year wherein the word interim is being used. Yes. If I didn't know the definition of interim, I wouldn't even have bothered. I would have thought it's business as usual. The budgets come out and this is the same budget, mm. more or less, which could uh, be passed, you know, when okay. uh, this or, you know, any government comes into power in the next three to four months, which may be slight tweaking to increasing the CapEx numbers if that's what happens by then. Got it. So if looking at it more from a, an overall uh, entirety, what direction do you think, you know, post this budget does it give in terms of the growth, the economic growth going ahead? And what can we expect uh, in terms of an impact on the government's borrowings, consequent bond yields and interest rates going ahead? So, so Rakesh, very interesting questions. Uh, growth. Uh, and bond yields, uh, mm. you know, that would lead to obviously the borrowings, right? Mm -hmm. So firstly, how does growth come? Growth comes when you invest in infrastructure, when you invest in CapEx. So let me take you through a slide. Yeah. Look at what has happened since this government has come into power. Mm. The government has increased its spend. I actually didn't realize this, but you know what? What an interesting comment. This government used to spend 1.6 trillion rupees in fiscal 24 in capex. This year they've incrementally spent 1.6 trillion rupees in capex. I really didn't realize it. I got it just now. But mm. mathematically, what this means is the government is increasing F 2014 this year, right? Doesn't that sound solid? And that tells you where the growth can really come. You know, so that's right. point one. Right. Uh, point two: this growth is coming where? This growth is coming. Most of us, you know, must be complaining to the government saying that how much are you doing on roads? Uh, you know, why are you literally digging and trenching and making us travel a lot more? But this growth has come with 18 times more money spent in the road part of the business. Second, look at railways and mm. metros. You know, I had gone to Shirdi on Sunday and uh, a, I was just seeing the train pass by a one day Bharat. You know, yeah. 70 kilometers per hour, five hours, going at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, the person was 10 times fresher than I was when I reached by my car. And I think that tells you that, you know, how the rail industry is doing. They're not leaving any path, uh, you know, away. If at one time they were, you know, adding, you know, as what Rahul tells us, our analyst, you know, 100 to 150 wagons in a month. The mm. focus is in the next two years, the next year itself to go to 1,000 wagons in a month. That's okay. called growth, right? 10 times yeah. the size, and that's why you've got 10 times the overall uh, uh, multiplier effect that the government has come. Uh, in the water treatment, you know, we've only heard of people falling sick, drinking water mm. from the tap, uh, the industrial people saying we're getting hard water, our water is have so much of salt, uh, the productivity of what we're getting out of a factory in chemicals are a problem. All this is getting solved by just desalinating water and the water treatment uh, uh, part of the government's project. Uh, be it, people only think of irrigation as water treatment, but there are many other forms. Uh, you know, irrigation is saving water, but you know, utilizing the water into better ways. Uh, that is also water and that okay. has gone up seven times. Okay. 
So overall, the, the numbers with the government is focusing on growth has gone up seven times. So the mm -hmm. question is when you increase your growth uh, propeller, which is the capex by seven times in 11 years, will yeah. you really grow the GDP only by six to seven percent in the next year or two? Or will Absolutely. India become a manufacturing hub for the world? And the growth could propel to much higher levels. And I think Absolutely. not being an economist, I will hazard yeah. not giving a comment there. But I can say mm. it's going to beat our estimates in terms of growth in the next three to five years. Interesting. Uh, Just you on one like, point, Vinay, sorry to interrupt because you're on this chart. But, you know, do you see the kind of growth you've seen in some of these uh, segments, you know, for CapEx? Do you see the same sectors remaining the key focus areas? Or do you see, you know, incrementally other sectors also now? probably attracting more in investments as we go ahead. So, you know, the word others has a lot and that's the mm. sizable biggest chunk yeah. of this overall number. Maybe the next time, you know, we should break this up and also show you power equipment, utilities, yeah. you know, where the overall number is coming. But uh, our analyst Rahul tells us that, you know, there's close to 10, 40 gigahertz, gigawatts of power supply coming purely in renewables in mm. solar. Okay. You've got some numbers coming in in wind. Uh, you, then you have thermal, uh, you have hydel. So there is a lot of capacities coming up. So okay. infra purely in terms of the big five or big six breakups, you know, be it railway, defense, road, and uh, others, which itself is. I think that's where you'll see the chunk of the overall business coming. Uh, telecom, I would add, okay. is the next incrementally big part of it because. Uh, I know BSNL's uh, overall budget was cut a bit, but if you look at mm. what the government is spending on, it's spending on fiber and 5G. So right. it's spending right. on improving the quality of connectivity which you and I are using today, uh, you know, to give it to back to, you know, uh, save money on travel. Uh, that's sure. the fifth part, you know, where sure. investments will really come up. Sure. You know, another very interesting thing is who is getting this money, Rakesh? Yeah. Now, if, if I just look at, I'm just using the word power, if I look at power, power is now gone to nearly one trillion rupees. But you know, there are two or three companies who are who got an order book, which is, you know, somewhere close to one third this number. OK, you know, their, their order books are, you know, in, in the range of, you know, somewhere close to, you know, uh, I would say 12 billion for one company, 13 billion for one company. If I add all three companies, it's somewhere close to 20, 25, 30 billion. Now, right. who is this order book, which itself is one trillion? going to on a yearly basis and how much can the order flow go to these companies mm. uh, in the times to come? I think that itself is growth of profitability for companies in the future. But Rakesh, quickly going on to your other two questions on interest. Exactly, and on, the, on the interest rates and the bond yields. Vinay. I yeah. think that's so important quick, as well. Yes. Quickly going yeah. there and yeah. for a minute, I'll, I'll go to you know one of, uh, one of the other charts uh, because uh, you know, so interest rates world over uh, have been going up substantially. Hmm. Now, with interest rates world over going up substantially, uh, you know incrementally they have to come down, right? Uh, this is the US interest rate chart. They yeah. have to come down. The fiscal okay. deficit in countries like US are at insane levels. You know, they're at 6 to 6.3% levels, which, you know, if I just don't take the state part of it, they've already beaten India, which has never happened historically. Uh, in their numbers, apart from the COVID Correct. time, wherein you know they spend a sizable amount of you know ten odd percent in the fiscal deficit. Uh, now, if this is the case, the global debt has mounted up to three hundred and seven trillion dollars, and if I divide that by the GDP of hundred trillion dollars, we are trading at a net debt to GDP of somewhere close to three x for the world. Correct. As against okay. that, our net debt to GDP for India is under one. Uh. Now, even if I add all debt together, it's about one to one, one, one to 1.2 times uh, the overall number. And that gives you a feel good of where growth can be and where interest levels for India can be in the future. Okay. Right now, what does interest levels to India be in the future mean? Uh, technically, uh, we've seen Bloomberg and uh, JP Morgan uh, EM indexes allow uh, or suggest that, you know, they would be uh, India would be included in the bond index into them. So you're seeing inflows arguably from $25 billion north, uh, exactly coinciding with numbers post elections coming in. So you're going to see a sizable amount of money come in the debt market post elections. When money comes into the country of that size post elections, what 
are going to happen to the interest rate in the country will they stick to the normal economic stance of uh, us minus india interest rate should not go below 2% if us says that you know we're going to be longer for the 4 to 5% mark or will india go to the 5 to 6% mark mm. i think the latter would happen a lot more earlier than what investors expect then okay. the primer which is you know depending on us's interest rates to move down because us obviously has its sense of nuances uh, of slow down uh, coming up in the future and Sorry. interest rates uh, if they don't come down uh, if slow down doesn't happen interest rates are very high for long so they okay. kind of caught you know in in the same story but as sure. far as india is concerned interest rates come down now no. with interest rates coming down going to the third part of your question mm. what happens to the overall debt or the yeah. gross borrowings incrementally for the year we think that yeah. comes down okay so if you are ending the when you are breaking up sorry by 3 yeah. trillion okay, okay. my it. apologies yeah. uh, you know yeah. i think bharat has got to do a better job but <laughs> you are increasing the yeah. uh, revenues uh, for the country sure uh, you are reducing the costs or keeping the costs at the same level for the country if right. that be the case the differential between the two is the fiscal deficit which is marginally the same number as it what it was earlier hmm but the gdp sure. because of the nominal value is going up hence your gross borrowing is not going to go up as much as the past at least not Got as it. a percentage in absolute terms it will be you know similar to last year or you know down by a trillion compared to last year so what would happen in the next budget the government has that one more trillion they can give for capex you know if they think they need be and keep the gross borrowing program similar to f24 levels and still uh, you know be a lot more uh, positive so i think okay. lots of good things in terms of growth can be expected uh, you know from india in the future sure thanks for it thanks for that and uh, moving back again to the specifically on the budget was there any announcement which stood out for you you know even though this was a an interim budget or a set of announcements or a key set of uh, directions or uh, uh, you know uh, moves forward from, from from the government that uh, stood out in any kind so, of schemes or initiatives so i think the biggest announcement which the government did was it kind of told the sell side you can really go home we've hmm. done our work uh, you don't need to sit till 12 in the night and write big reports right uh, interestingly they didn't change a single tax okay uh, be it gst be it income tax so the work required to be done was more understanding what's happening in the budget and believing that you know it's business as usual and let's go on we are not changing any policies there are no surprises and sometimes right. it's so easy to say that right there are no surprises coming up and right. uh, it's business as usual you're wanting mm. to do some work and analyze the budget but there was nothing to analyze it was very Got simple it. it was exactly what they said last year they did and they moved on so right. technically right. i think that was the single biggest thing which they did they did okay. nothing different from what anyone would have expected maybe okay. one odd uh, sector would always have a complaint that you know you should have given us more money or you know increased our uh, reduced our tax to increase the gamut but overall i think what the government has done is a simple suggestion of what they're doing in uh, the years ahead and sure. budget is just a single day wherein they do some action and they add more of what they did in the last 12 months which could come virtually on a monthly basis uh, in terms of action and execute it together and show you a pnl think of it this way right uh, mm. when did the gst rates last change mm. not on the budget day when did the corporate tax rate uh, last change again not in the budget mm. uh, so you know these big changes which are coming in are not happening when the budget is getting announced yeah yeah so on the budget day you got to look at post mortem more than future look at what is the past action and then look at segments where the government spending is coming where they are actually going to tell you where the future is happening so sure. it's making the budget as a consolidation of number of days in the year where they've taken an action and future of just the government set of companies where they're going to spend on the government part of the story okay. now you know rakesh this is a school of mm-hmm. thought you know which uh, again you know one of our economists uh, anirudh was uh, sharing with me and you know I, i think i should say this here is his point to me when i came out of the budget was i should have uh, we should have increased the capex spend was my thought his point mm. was what if they increase the capex spend will corporate spend or are they giving space for the corporate to spend as well 
So these are thoughts also which the government would have had when they would have come up with, uh, you know, what they should do in, in, in the months to come in terms of CapEx. Sure, they can step up the CapEx, but if you are a corporate sure. and you start seeing election behind you, won't you increase your CapEx when you know FIIs are coming in with money or would you let competition increase the CapEx? So okay. I think the government is kind of partially stepped down on its, you know, uh, 360k per hour speed, which was running on the CapEx part and said we're spending where we think is appropriate. But here, you know, corporates mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. about whether you want to spend or we'll take it away again, probably in the future. Well, was there anything specifically for the rural sector in particular, which you noticed or, uh, you know, thought the government is thinking about going ahead, particularly as this has gone through a tough period uh, recently? So, so break up the rural sector into CapEx. Where does the CapEx go? Does the CapEx mm. go only in the urban sector? A lot of that goes in roads which are being made in rural sector. You know, yes. just go from Bombay to Ahmedabad and look mm. at the way the roads have gone. I'm not even saying North India because that will give us a huge complex uh, because North mm. India, the roads have been done a lot more better. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, so roads are coming all over which help rural CapEx. Directly affordable housing is directly linked to what's spending in rural CapEx. Okay. Uh, the Didi Lakpati scheme is largely linked to what's happening in rural part of the thing. So the overall money spent clearly uh, is going on to rural spends. Uh, sure. It doesn't mean, you know, uh, the you know, historically number of toilets to be made for, uh, for safety norms, those are reducing. Mm -hmm. All it means is that they're spending on those and more and also improving the lifestyle okay. for yeah. rural yeah. India. Yeah. A huge complex. Uh, uh, to, to spend. Been done a lot more better. Uh, 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 you know, so, sorry, could I request someone to please mute? Help rural capex. Directly affordable housing is directly being made on spending in rural capex. Sorry for that. Yeah. Yeah, Vinay, continue. Yeah, so what I was saying was, you know, rural capex, if you look at it, uh, you know, it has come from multiple avenues mm. and those multiple avenues seem to suggest that, you know, today you're at 3.7 trillion, which is very similar to, you know, what you had spent during COVID time where you had yeah. stepped up and uh, it's going in the right spaces. So, you know, it's, it's I think a thumbs up again out there. Uh, the government has been, you know, in crops and otherwise increasing the pricing for MSPs, uh, you know, for uh, crops. So there are enough of ways and more where the government is giving back to rural India as well. Uh, but this is not the end of uh, the budget. You've got one more six months coming in. Tomorrow, if there is a slowdown in rural India, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing some uh, inputs come in in those parts of it, you know, wherein, you know, they want to increase the per capita sure. income and money sure. coming in out there. Sure. So now, Vinay, where do you think, uh, you know, we should be positioned now? You know, I mean, post the budget, uh, we've got an election uh, impending in May, uh, you know, and as we go through 2024, you know, how should we be positioned? So, you know, my perspective, if it's business as usual, we can't change the thought process of what we were thinking earlier. Right. Okay. And I think there are two big themes we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. You know, the first theme is the CapEx theme. How do we make money as investors or fund managers in the story which is linked to water, utilities, cap goods, uh, defense? Uh, you know, I can just go on and on railways, roads. Uh, yeah. How do we make money by investing in those companies which are clean, where the balance sheets are clean and where valuations are relatively, I can't use the word compelling now because India is close to a peak, but which is looking very relatively attractive based on the future earnings growth trajectory which India is giving. And sure. that's where, you know, for me, uh, the CapEx story comes in. So that's okay. step one. Uh, mm -hmm. No changes out there. There could be companies mm -hmm. which because of pricing could have, uh, you know, because the stock price moving up, uh, could have changed, but no changes out there. And the second big theme, you know, which we are looking at as a team is make in India. Now, make in India means two things, right? What are you doing better than China? And where can you replace China? Okay. Right. Uh, why I said two things is sometimes you may replace China, even though you are not doing better than them, but because the availability is a lot more consistent, uh, you're being preferred. 
Mm. And I think the world is looking at a China plus one strategy. They're not looking at a make in India strategy so far. I hope by the next budget, you know, we come and say the world is looking at a make in India strategy as well. Uh, okay. Having said that, for now, I think the way we're going to look at it is two spaces which come out, you know, uh, on my eyes or on our team's eyes. Uh, one space is obviously IT, IT mm. plus ERND. Now I would put it. And the other space is in chemicals and pharmaceuticals, okay. uh, especially in chemicals where you're seeing CDMAOs or make in India stories come in particular uh, parts of their business. Uh, they may be small. Uh, that's why you'll use the word specialty chemical, but there are lots of interesting uh, make in India stories coming in in this space. Mm. Interesting. OK. And where do you see, uh, you know, the, the financials part specifically? in this whole uh, uh, positioning when it considering it's the largest sector you know in terms of index uh, weightage so you know incrementally our view is very simple is mm. the financial industry in a feel good environment or as they call it the coldy lock environment i think the answer is yes okay because a, a credit growth is robust uh, mm. b the uh, liquidity in the system today is minus 2.6 trillion, but you know, it's relatively, I think this is the only thing if I had to re put, you know, would be relatively negative. Uh, government initiatives uh, for increasing the loan book uh, uh, is very positive. Uh, for increasing CapEx is very positive. The yeah. world has massive problems. Balance sheets are very good. Quality of asset is very good. Okay. Uh, the NPAs are at virtually all time lows. Uh, so what that means is, you know, and even despite the government increasing, you know, the risky, uh, you know, the risk weight ratios for uh, banks and capitals to do it, you're seeing a very solid number uh, mm. on uh, the, you know, on the amount of on the quality of balance sheet or the capital liquidity ratio, which the banks have, which tend to believe you that you're in a very sweet spot. Uh, but okay. you've not seen corporate growth take off. Because you've not seen corporate growth take off, it's retail India, you know, which is growing. You know, if you see this number, it's like 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And retail India growing and corporate India not growing as much uh, has led to a improving NIMS because the yields of retail India are very good. Uh, okay. And the loan book being robust in terms of growth. I think the next leg of growth could come here. But when the next leg of growth comes here, they will be at lower yields than retail India growth. Mm -hmm. So the quality of balance sheet would improve for financials, not the absolute earnings potential as they had in the past. They were growing at 30, 35 percent. I think that number will go down to 12 to 15 percent. So it's becoming a stock pickers market as far as uh, uh, the financials are concerned. Here we would look a lot more at the lending space than the non lending space, uh, if that helps you. Out. No, that's it. That's thank you for that. And you know, just to close off on the positioning part, uh, Vinay, would you say we should still remain vastly uh, exposed to India even now rather than global facing sectors? Or do you see some green shoots uh, in the global economy also, especially if we are talking about the second half of the year and you might consider maybe, you know, heightening exposure, say in IT or something? So, you know, Rakesh, it's a tricky question. Uh, I don't know the definition of uh, uh, how much should be global to how much should be domestic. Mm. Uh, but let me just try to phrase it one way. Uh, mm. The make in India stories or the uh, con companies which increase exports for the country uh, are replacing China in some parts of it, and that's why we need to be it, be it IT. Okay be it ERND more than IT because that's helping defense as well. That's yes. helping EV as well. And these are new yes. technologies and you want to be on top of them. Sure. Or uh, be it contract manufacturing companies, which are getting dime a dozen orders from quality companies across the world. Or be sure. it the textile space, you know, which is uh, uh, sooner or later going to get, you know, some kind of uh, MFN status with other countries of the world. So you've got right. to keep your eyes open because that's where India is very, very strong. Okay. The question is, there is a global slowdown, so global consumption will be lesser than domestic consumption. Okay. Because global consumption will be lesser than domestic consumption, you've got to be very specific in what you're buying in the global stocks. That's the space wherein domestic India's market share is going up disproportionately. 
Okay. So even if global consumption goes down and you're getting a big market share as compared to nothing in the past, you're a winner. So you need to be there in the global facing sectors in the Got spaces, it. you know, which we mentioned, which is, uh, 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 you know, largely manufacturing in Made manufacturing. India and yeah. IT. Uh, but domestically is the CapEx cycle. So do you want to be the engine for growth of India or do you just want to be in the consumption space? You know, yes. uh, again, you know, uh, commenting on, you know, Anirudh and I, Anirudh uh, are our uh, consumer analyst. Uh, mm. You know, we were thinking about in the consumption space, will you get a Varun again in the short term, which has gone to a value, which is uh, touch wood, you know, made money for your investors? Uh, or will it that, you know, now its earnings growth will be 15 to 20%, still fantastic compared to an FMCG name, maybe in 18 to 22%. Yeah. Or do you need to find the next company which may be in the capex cycle surely because they never had growth right so Got growth it. is coming there so Got you know a good company and a good stock in the future may be two different answers out here so investing will be in good stocks you know which is relatively cheap and higher earnings growth thank you Vinay. and just one last observation or point you know before we probably open it up to the floor uh to the audience for questions do you think this uh, budget has had any impact uh, globally on investors focusing on India, if any? Uh, and clearly, do you see you know the direction we are going in? Uh, you know, we should expect incrementally higher flows into India. So I'm going to just look at statistics, right? Mm. So let me just take you through a sheet. Mm. So if I look at what has happened CYTD, you know, basically this year, Nikkei is the best performing market. So Japan is the best performing market. It's up 8%. Yeah. MSCI China is the worst performing market. It's down 11. So you've seen a 20% differential between the best and worst performing market. I don't know whether in my history or your history, you could have ever seen a difference of, of countries of this size having a difference of 20% in the first month of the, of the I'm, year. I'm, I'm staring at that number. I'm just trying to absorb it. Minus 11% calendar year to date, and we are only into 6th of February. <laughs> well, so let's stare at this number. That's even worse. Mm, 41%. Right? So, so, so China is yes. down 41% from its yes. highs, right? So technically, you're back to 2008-9 levels for China, and there's Correct. still questions being asked. Uh, but Correct. you know, what has happened to India? was your question. Mm. I actually wanted to show you the best and worst case. Indian yeah, markets yeah. are up 2 to 3 percent. The broader base index is up only 0. Yeah. But in yeah. line with the best performing market in Japan, uh, you have the small caps which people had said let's sell off and move on. Uh, mm. Done the best in the world in this month itself at 8 percent. This is something which you know uh, a quant analyst was looking and rechecked and rechecked three times. You know, so Dharmendra was like checking this data saying that am I seeing something wrong or is yeah. actually the Indian small cap sector the best performing sector in the world yeah. again, right? Because you see last year also it was amongst the best performing sectors last six months FITD, uh, mm. you know, it's basically doing fantastically earnings trajectory is doing well and uh, the government seems to I'm, I, the investors be it domestic or global are seem to be saying thumbs up. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you saw huge inflows happen in China. You haven't seen that $12 billion of uh, inflows coming in in a couple of weeks in India. Mm. You have not seen that. But because the FI ownership is so low, uh, like you saw in October, November, December, you know, when inflows come in, they come in a lot more. Yes. Uh, but rather not at the speed of China. We still have, I think the world is talking a lot more than investing in the country. But I think the visibility parameter for India, let me just take you to a slide, yeah. has increased substantially. Right? Okay. In the last nine months, we've seen $21 billion, and most of this has come in the last four months. Sure. From FIS. Sure, sure. Very interesting. So I guess, Vinay, maybe now we can open the floor up uh, to questions uh, uh, from, from the audience. Welcome any questions uh, to all uh, you know, to all the participants. You can also put it on the on the Q&A or the chat board and we'd be happy to take them.
Yeah. Any questions uh, from the audience again, please? Rakesh, if there are no questions, uh, I think mm. because people have heard a lot of budget uh, yes. uh, discussions yes. and we've had a webinar less than you know 15 days ahead. Sure. Uh, maybe uh, let's just uh, sign off, uh, you know, and conclude Definitely. the same. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, you know, wanted to just thank, sorry, Rakesh, first. Yeah, no, I was just going to say like, you know, to thank everybody, uh, you know, for participating uh, on the call, uh, you know, very much appreciate uh, your involvement and uh, look forward to uh, engaging with you uh, at some point in the future. So, you know, thanks again to all of you. Vire, any closing remarks? No, you've been all very kind to, you know, come and join the call. If you need mm -hmm. something, please get back to our team, uh, uh, be it sales or us directly. Uh, you have us both on LinkedIn as well as you have our data, our emails with you. Uh, look forward to relating Hang with on, you Vine, in the Vine, We have one question. How do you see the next couple of months with respect to equity investments. So, you know, it. my bet is the Indian markets will do much better till we come to the elections because elections seems to be more or less. We know what's happening. The question is how mm. many votes are we going to get? That's, you know, the key feedback I'm getting from tons of investors. Sure. Uh, and that is why you're seeing front ended returns compared to what people would have believed in other elections coming in back ended. Uh, what I'm hoping is the market doesn't go and you know, you know, I remember we had said 25 by 25 three months or six months ago. Mm -hmm. When we said that, you know, uh, people were kind of smiling, saying that are you serious? You know that the index levels can go to 25,000. Yeah. Now when we're seeing 15 percent upside from the current levels. Uh, a, a, to touch 25, are they saying is it too less? Will it happen in the next six months? And I think that's telling you that inflows will start coming in in July, August, September. But everybody okay. knows inflows will come up. You know, that's more or less a done deal. Mm -hmm. And because that is a done deal, uh, you're seeing the market as robust as it now. Uh, and I would not hazard saying that wait for elections to put your money in. You know, I would say okay. get your idea if you're convinced on it. Uh, uh, just buy your equity investment right away. Uh, you can use SIPs or you can, you know, stagger it and buy it over a period of time. But please uh, don't wait for a period of time or else, you know, the market will start looking expensive in your eyes. Sure. OK, and uh, any CapEx beneficiaries, Vinay? Any examples of CapEx beneficiaries? So, uh, let me just take you through the chart which uh, mm. you know which I showed. Just give me a minute. Sure. These are the names of CapEx beneficiaries. Uh, Raul has done a very efficient chart out here showing you the short cycle capital beneficiaries, the EPC players, the water mm. treatment players, the defense players and the railway players. Uh, so you have a plethora of uh, CapEx uh, benefit players, uh, be it ABB, Siemens, Hitachi, Honeywell, CG, Power, Praj, uh, Kirloska Royals, uh, Cummins. Uh, in the EPC names, uh, you know, you have Inox, uh, Wind, you have Sterling and Wilson, you have Thermax, you have LNT. Mm. In water, you've got Vartec, uh, uh, Iron Exchange. In defense, you've got Hindustan Aeronautics, Bharat Dynamics, Electronics. Uh, in railways, you've got Titagar, Texmeco, Texaco, Jupiter. Jupiter. So yeah. these are all companies which would gain in their earnings substantially uh, when uh, you know when the capex moves their way. These are yeah. companies which will gain in their earnings. Uh, we obviously you know uh, have select names we like uh, you know which I showcased to you in the sheet earlier out here. Mm. Uh, but uh, the entire name of companies which would gain you know I thought that was what your question was. Yeah. OK. So I don't see any other questions, Vinay. I think we can we can wind up then. Yeah. That, thank you All very, right. very much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers. Bye bye.